Welcome to Jessica. I'm your host, Jessica Rector. Today we're talking about being Mexican American. And when your parents come from the background of Mexican American, but they want to inherit two different cultures into you as a child, how you deal with that as a person, and if there's any kind of strain on the relationship with the parents, how it affects you and your family. Please welcome my guest today, Sal Rodriguez. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about where you came from and where your parents came from and how they incorporate the Mexican-American heritage into you a little bit differently. Okay. Well, I was born and raised, I was born in Los Angeles off of the 101 freeway in the back seat of a car. Literally? Literally, because uh, they couldn't make it their way to the hospital. They were I running late. you were making a joke. No, 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 like, that's so no, no. I was born in the backseat of the car off the 101 freeway near the western exit. And uh, oh. my, I was raised in Pacoima, which is on the northeast end of the San Fernando Valley. My mother is from San Bernardino, and her parents were from Chihuahua, Mexico. My dad is from Mexico, from, I believe, Michoacan or Jalisco. I'm not entirely certain, but then his family went through Tijuana, and then they came over from Tijuana. Right. And so when your parents met, they both had different ideas of what it was to be Mexican-American, or how did they incorporate their heritage to you? Well, for one thing, my parents got together for what would be called a marriage of convenience. Okay. My mother was a single mother with four kids, and she wanted someone to help her buy a home. Mm. My father wanted a green card. So they basically got together to help one another with their individual goals. Now, did both of them know that that's what they were getting oh, together? Oh, certainly. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, there was some physical attraction. Right. There was a sexual chemistry. Let's and that's hope why, that they produced a kid, yeah, yes. That's why I'm here. But, uh, but basically, they got together with that understanding that you help me, I help you. Scratch my back, I'll scratch right. yours. So they got together and um, tried to then form a real relationship for uh, and 10, how 10 did years. that work? Well, it was a rocky, rocky relationship. Um, for one thing, he was very much into his Mexican heritage. He didn't, my right. mother's a very bossy woman. She's, uh, you know, so she's second generation, I believe it's called. And she, she rules with an iron fist. And my dad was saying, you know, I'm the man. In fact, he used to speak like this. I'm the man. The man, the Mexican man, and the man of the house. You do not tell me what to do. You are the woman, and I am the man. And where he came from, that was the way that it was. Right. But my mother would have none of that, so she... Now, did your parents speak English or, Mex or Spanish in the house? Uh, my dad's his primary he said oh, he speak Mexican. Mexican. You know what though? If you look all across uh, <laughs> know, Mexico and Central and South America, there is actually a Mexican. Because I was like, okay, Mexican. Like Mexican that. is actually a language. It is? The, yeah, because Spanish all across the Latin American countries is spoken differently, different oh. dialects. So actually, Mexican is. Is it a dialect? Well, Mexican is a form no? of Spanish. Okay. Mexican Spanish or Mexican is Spanish, but Spanish not necessarily Mexican. So if you speak if you speak Mexican Spanish, it's actually different than if you speak Puerto Rican Spanish or Cuban Spanish Could or Colombian. Could you Spanish. all understand each other though? Oh, sure. Everyone. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I there can't. There is a such thing as Mexican Spanish. Yeah, there is. <laughs> okay. There is a Mexican Spanish. Uh, so basically, uh, what was the question? I don't know, because uh -huh. I was so stuck on um, oh, speaking English Mexican. or oh, so, yeah. Spanish. So my father, uh, English, uh, it was a second language. Okay. And he used to try to give me Spanish lessons as a little boy and tell me how to count and just give me little general lessons as but a little boy. But your mom boy. taught I, you in English? My mother doesn't speak Spanish. Oh. And so she was actually, when her parents came over here from Chihuahua, they basically told her, we're going to raise you American. I say, quote, unquote, whatever that means. We're right. going to raise you American. We're not going to teach you Spanish. And so my mother was not raised speaking Spanish, and she does not know Spanish to this day. You know, little phrases here and there. She knows how to order food and stuff like that, I suppose. So basically, she never taught me any Spanish, didn't care about it. My dad tried to teach me some Spanish, but uh, Spanish was not spoken in our home. So you, do you know Spanish? I know day? a little bit that I picked up uh, through the neighborhood, that I pick up by watching Spanish television every now and again. So and how did your parents communicate if your dad spoke mainly well, Spanish he spoke, and your mom spoke English? Well, he spoke broken English. You know, he, he did know enough English to communicate and to get by day to day. And um, so that, you know, he, broken English with a thick accent. Right. But, uh, so they did communicate. So you had two different cultures going on because you had your dad who was trying to instill 
Mexican heritage yeah. or who was still living that way himself. Yeah. And then you had your mom who was like American, American, American. Yeah, yes. So yeah. how did that affect you? Well, for one thing, there was a very large cultural divide. Uh, growing up, I'd go with my mother and her uh, extracurricular activities, her parties, her okay. friends, and all her friends and all their parties were all white American mm -hmm. parties. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was just English only. I'd go with my dad and his friends and his parties, and it was uh, uh, um, uh, quinceañeras, which is the, when a girl turns 15, that's okay. like a sweet 16 party. All the weddings that we ever went to were all in Spanish. The, the baptisms were all in Spanish. Went to church, the church was in Spanish. So basically, I'd go with my mom for her deals and I'd go with my dad for his things. And um, I actually had no problem with it. I actually was, was fine with it, I liked it. Wait, so you were able to adapt to both of them well? Well, when I would go with, with my dad, I really didn't, I didn't understand a lot. I, I kind of felt like an outsider to some degree also because all my cousins, all his brothers and sisters' children, they all s were bilingual. Mm. And so I felt different. I always felt different regardless of where I was. was. When I was with the white American people, I felt like, you know, somewhat different because, uh, you know, one thing, the color of my skin and my name, right. and then I'd be with my dad's family and I felt different because I didn't speak any Spanish. So regardless of where I was, either with my mother or with my dad, whenever we were doing things, uh, uh, I always felt somewhat out of place. And so when you weren't doing something, when you were in your house, did you still feel out of place? Because here's your mom on this side, here's your dad on this side, and you're kind of in the middle. Yeah, well, well my, my parents had one thing that really held them tight together, and that was their dancing. They used to dance together. They used to rip up the floor of country western dance clubs, namely the place called the Palomino, which is a, was in North Hollywood. And they used to tear up the dance floor. And I remember going to see them dance to the Jack Daniels band. Uh, I think it's Jack Daniels. Country Jeff, Jeff Daniels, maybe. I don't know. Jeff Daniels is an actor. Anyway, yeah. so they used to rip up the country western floor. And it was a novelty because my dad would walk into these white American cowboy places. And here was this Mexican guy just tearing up the dance floor. So they would clear the floor, my parents would. So that was their bond, was their right. dancing. And they also used to sing as well, not together, but they both had an interest in singing. So basically, they, that held them together, uh, which was something I loved to see them, because that was when they really looked happy, was when they were dancing. Aww. As far as in the house, where I was there in the home, Spanish wasn't spoken in, in the home. My dad would speak to me in English, in, in, with his broken, uh, you know, broken English. And my mother just always spoke to me in, in English. So the only time I ever really experienced Spanish speaking growing up was when I went with my dad and his family elsewhere, or when I would visit my friends' families at their homes, their parents always spoke Spanish. Did you, you and your dad have any kind of bond? Because because if he's doing the Mexican thing and he wants you to do it or he brings you along, you would somehow feel that there's a bond there. But then when you would go back home and you'd get thrust into the American way of life, there may be you know, some distance between you guys back home because mm -hmm. of that way. Yeah. So how did it affect your relationship with your father? Well, for one thing, Let's start off with the fact that when, when my dad met my mother, she was a single mother with four kids. Mm -hmm. So when my dad came into the picture, my siblings all called him Sal. Mm -hmm. And that's all they ever referred to him was as Sal. So I just called him Sal. I never called my dad dad, which is, is you know, there's some, interesting. yeah, there's some interesting feelings I have associated with that. I, I, I kind of, I, like, I feel bad. I don't feel guilty. I was a little boy, but I feel bad about the whole thing. I never called my dad dad. I called him Sal. When did you realize that most kids don't call their dad by their first name. I think till I was in my adolescence. Yeah, it, it was just so, it was just so normal for our household. Now he used to grab me and say, very matter of factly, I'm your father, call me father. He used to tell me that. But like I told you when we first met, I find that interesting that even when your dad was telling you to call him father. Father has a different meaning than dad. Yes. Dad's more endearing, more loving. Yeah. Father is a title. No, my dad wanted respect. He wanted, he wanted to, for me to acknowledge his position, his authority in the household, which again was going back to the, the Mexican machismo thing. I'm the man, this is, right. my, this is my house, this is how you are to call me. Do you call your, what do you call your mom? Crazy. No. <laughs> I call my mother mom. I've never called her anything different. My siblings called her mom, I called her mom. Hell, if they would have called my mother something else, maybe I would have called her by her first name. So you didn't realize that your friends were calling their dad, dad, and you didn't realize that it was different for you until well, you, your adolescence? Well, for one thing, it, on, on that topic, I, talking about my friends' dads, calling their dad anything. I mean, for one thing, most of my friends didn't have dads. From okay. where I grew up in, in, in the lower income Latino right. communities, dads were almost non-existent. A and That's B. That's a good point because that didn't occur to me. Yeah, and the dads that, that were there, my friends literally had no relationships with. I mean, they, 
they had no communication. There was definitely no intimacy, which is, would have been a far out concept. But any sort of communication with their fathers, they just didn't have. 